I am an author of the book Three Culprits: Laziness, Fear, and Doubt. I am also an elite performance mentor for visionary leaders, a parenting coach, where I focus on parents of five to fifteen year olds. And today I have with me an amazing parenting coach, a founder of Tulsi Kindergarten, who uses the world of way to guide the parents and the children. Uh, Divya, who's here with me. Thank you, Divya, for taking time out. I'm really glad that you could do this uh, session. And we did have an earlier session as well, where we had to probably call off. But today, we are hoping that we are going to give you some amazing insights. So do stay tuned in till the end and uh, ask your questions on whichever platform you're viewing. It comes up to us and so we can continue to help you and guide you. And today's session is going to focus on the early years, which Divya is going to be talking about, uh, especially children uh, between from birth to seven years. And I will be focusing a little bit on after that. And uh, Divya has got some amazing rules, what she called the five golden rules. And I'm excited to hear about that. But firstly, thank you for all the viewers who are logging in live to watch this. Thank you so much for taking this time out. And I'm equally excited about this program and Divya is as we were talking in the back room. Divya, thank you for taking time out. Uh, your first comments. Thanks, Pritam. Thanks for inviting me uh, to this platform. I'm uh, really, uh, I feel privileged to be here with you. Um, and uh, yes, let's just go ahead. <laughs> Super. You know, I'm sure our audience is waiting to know also about the five golden rules that I just spoke about. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what would, what are these golden rules before even getting on to what those golden rules are, you know? And uh, uh, yeah. So, um, see, Waldorf is, uh, is like an ocean. You go into it and it is very deep. So here, uh, um, and I have worked with uh, many mentors who have, you know, um, uh, wonderful mentors across the globe who have taught me uh, Waldorf in different ways and different stages. So when I met Helle Heckman, who runs a, a kindergarten in Copenhagen, uh, she has, uh, you know, simplified Waldorf for parenting and she has written a book called Five Golden Keys of Parenting. And she's, she is the one who started uh, talking about slow parenting and why we need to slow down. So inspired by her book, and uh, her, uh, you know, um, uh, mentoring, I started Slow Down Mama program for parents. Mm -hmm. This is when COVID hit us and all mm -hmm. the children were locked up at home. And parents were, uh, you know, very, very um, anxious that their children are not learning enough. They're not growing in an appropriate way. So what do we do with them at home? And parents being busy with their work front, home front. Uh, they didn't know what to do with their children at home. So that is when I started uh, these sessions called Slow Down Mama. And each topic would take an hour. Mm. So here we I have just simplified it just to bring it, you know, you know, all the five topics in an hour's time. So I'll try to do my best. But, uh, you know, we can we I, I would suggest that parents do enroll for this uh, elaborate program to benefit more. So these five golden rules, uh, uh, let me begin with the first uh, yep. uh, golden rule. Firstly, a little bit background about Waldorf. Waldorf is started by Rudolf Steiner, who is an Austri who's born in Austria. And uh, when uh, like he had a lot of followers um, uh, under him. And when, he, when the first world, world war ended, there was this, uh, you know, about industrialization. The industrialization has just started. And there was this factory called Waldorf Cigarette Factory. And the workers in the factory needed uh, a child care for their children. Mm -hmm. So that is when uh, Emil Malt, who's the founder of uh, the, Waldorf, uh, the Waldorf Cigarette Factory, approached Steiner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, you know, if he can provide uh, a school or a space for these children to be taken care and some education must be given to them. Okay. So he brought together people and he started the first Waldorf school in Stuttgart in 1919. And the Waldorf philosophy itself belongs to the uh, general philosophy called anthroposophy, which, which means, which uh, uh, just uh, uh, simplified, means wisdom of human being. 
So under this wisdom of human being, Rudolf Steiner has spoken about child development, zero to seven years, seven to 14, 14 to 21, and, and so on in seven year phases. So the early child education, we focus on zero to seven years. And under this, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the five golden rules. Uh, so the first golden rule we are talking about is movement. Okay. Movement in terms of free movement, how the child is, you know, just being himself without unrestricted movement, which also happens to uh, be the primary way of achieving the milestones at an early age. So there are different milestones. The child has to be put on the floor. He has to start moving his hands, legs to move into the next milestone, which is rolling over and then move into crawling, sitting down, standing up and start begin to walk. So all this happens within a year's time. And a child has to have free space to move around to achieve all this in a year's time. And after the first year, movement is again very, very essential running around, jumping, climbing, climbing the furniture, climbing the stairs, climbing window railings. So these things help in their speech development, which is the target for year two. Uh, and today we are seeing that many children are coming with speech delays. So I have 15 years experience in Waldorf, Pritam. And when I began my career, we had about 15-20% children who came with speech delays. But today we can see 50-60% 50, 50, 50 children who come with sensory issues and speech delays. Primary reason being they've not moved enough. They've not moved in the right environment. They've not had the right sensorial experiences, which they're supposed to. So 50-60 years ago, there was no concept of kindergarten. Children were left at home. They were left on floor. They played with soil, they played climbing the trees, there was water, and they were exposed to all kinds of uh, natural elements. But today's children are locked up within the four walls. We are showing them screen time, and we are engaging them through screen time, video games, battery-operated toys, and the child is becoming less active. He's not moving enough. Absolutely and which is causing the speech delay in children. Absolutely. I think I couldn't agree more. And uh, uh, the first time I came uh, into Steiner philosophy, the anthroposophy has is, is been now 12 years, you know, close to that. And uh, it has always amazed me, the beauty of the philosophy and the changes, the uh, deep uh, changes that it makes in human beings. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, the well-roundedness in children. Right. And uh, I think uh, you hit the thing on the spot about the movement being so central. And uh, yes. my, my own mission is on will strength, which starts at that and uh, how central it is uh, to create this movement. And we as adults itself, we have reduced our movements today. Right. We are sitting in front of TVs, right. in front of yes. computers, and we are not seeing And children. When you put them who are naturally supposed to be in a state of movement, which is their natural state. We are already putting them in schools where you're probably seated for long hours. And on top of that, come home, sit on the couch again with TV or gadgets. And it's completely uh, kind of damaging. In fact, uh, Divya, you have this uh, toys program or rather, you know, which is a very popular program among parents of uh, young parents. And uh, could you share some more about this? Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, when in, in, in India, you know, uh, when I uh, when I conceived my daughter, uh, when she was born, there was, you know, I, when I looked up for toys and storybooks for her, okay. I could find that there were only a lot of junk that is available in the market. Mm -hmm. There was this uh, Chota Beam or Princess book or you know barbie book and barbie toys and plastic legos yeah. so the market was filled with junk and on yeah. social media people were only sharing about these junk to each other how you can engage the child uh, through educational toys so then i felt a need to uh, bring conscious uh, uh, consciousness into the, the uh, these you know uh, this kind of parenting style and that is when i started my little bookshop which was a space where I curated Indian storybooks 
and um, open ended toys mm. so when i when we speak about story books uh, when we when i when i say that indian authors write mm. uh, write them it is more relevant to our own local culture okay the children can relate to these stories rather than a peter climbing a hill or a you know snow covered mm. mountains or snow covered trees pine trees oak trees and uh, penguin and things like that which children don't see on daily basis mm. what children see, see is something outside their window is like a mango tree a neem tree mm. a dog crow you know mm. these are the local things that we see uh, around us and these are the stories that must be told to children mm. so i will show you some some of the story books which are you know relevant for children okay uh, indian children so this is one famous book on my uh, store which is called mala silver anklets okay so every child in the uh, house grows up with anklets uh, you know mm. and this is called where is amma okay so you can see the illustrations are very very much you know indian there is like a indian uh, dining indian living room and there is a indian kitchen so these are the things the illustrations also very much indian mm. which is you know compared to the story books that we get in the market okay. uh, which has uh, a very western kind of influence on them so the story what books are, are like what is the age group of uh, with the children you would recommend for these so, books so uh, these story books you can start from 1 year and they go up till you know 7 to 8 years also they'd like to just flip the pages and mm. uh, just see through the pictures not even understand the story mm. because the pictures are so rich the indian illustration uh, illustrators are so beautifully you know done this watercolor illustrations that just by seeing the picture book you can understand the story Mm. super and uh, i'm i'm really glad you bring this because sometimes uh, we we don't uh, uh, appreciate the visual side of yes uh, was this the textual you know we, I, I, in fact i had a child uh, a parent asking me that um, his child there has been less growth in the child very intelligent bright child she is a 16 year old girl and um, uh he was a little concerned that she hasn't grown up and things like that i asked him when did you start when did she start reading and when we started think she started reading very early 5 year 5 year old and uh, so uh, always wanting to read it's like it's good as parents with our intent is always good i always say parents your intent is always good it's only a matter of timing you know timing the right thing at yeah. the right place and that's what this whole parenting is about right and uh, before we continue i would like to uh, thank all the viewers who are watching in live thank you so much for taking time out today you're going to get a lot of practical wisdom and some mind blowing insights into parenting something that divya and me combined together we have over 25 30 years of experience of working with children and uh, young adults together and uh, i'm hoping that uh, we can give you those breakthroughs but more than that please do ask your questions we'll be happy to take it together yes and uh, give you those uh, answers and uh, uh, and i would also like to point that i have shared the link for my little bookshop where divya uh, gives some amazing insights into uh, for children the kind of toys that they could play with and she herself uh, uh, gives some guidance please do uh, click the link and join must have come up in whichever platform you're watching and uh, it's called facebook.com and the facebook.com search for groups my little bookshop and do sign up and follow her page and uh, she's got some amazing things there and uh, i'm also going to share uh, my youtube channel which i'm trying to now use for parenting and uh, focus on the parenting side because i get a lot of questions from parents both from india us and europe and i'm trying to give those guidances for parents so please do follow me there and you'll get some amazing insights uh thank you divya continuing um yeah i, I have a question where is uh, um, uh, where is amma was such a fave when my little man was a toddler brings back such fond memories i mean yeah. <laughs> probably somebody was read and was commenting thank you so yeah. much yes and uh, uh divya before we continue on to our other golden keys right and uh, sharing some insights uh, what what is the right age to start schooling right i know this the there are 
general trend is there general uh, you know uh, things are there but as a you know to make them into well rounded human what is a good age see earlier uh, um, when you know when i started my career we would say 3 plus is more appropriate we mm-hmm. want the children to spend more time with the parents uh, but over you know the 15 years the trend of parents being at home has changed mm-hmm. you know the, with both parents uh, of course it has changed long before but we have seen more in the recent times yeah. that both parents are working when there is no one to take care of the child either there is a nanny or there is a uh, there is a, a grandparents who are taking care of children who are not able to give mm-hmm. enough what a parent could you know they are mm-hmm. not able to give uh, what a parent can give not they mm-hmm. cannot run around the child keep the child actively engaged mm-hmm. so now also after covid we see that children are coming with a lot of uh, uh, stranger anxiety they are not mingling with other children or they are not talking to adults so we recommend that two is a good age you know uh, at least coming thrice in a week to a, a, a kindergarten kind of space where a child is not forced with a lot of uh, sensory over stimulation but where a child can just come and play in the sand just sing some songs and you know have some a uh, fruit fruit time you know a very basic program for children is good mm-hmm. by schooling we do not mean that a child must start reading and writing that is not what schooling is for a young child a schooling is about meeting new people making attempts to make uh, you know build relationships what is caring what is sharing and we are we, we parents are very anxious we say say hello say sorry say thank you these are not things that a child will learn by you teaching them theoretically by experiencing what is caring and what is sharing by seeing two children share with each other is when a child will start learning these things absolutely so you know mm-hmm. i would recommend uh, a very a simple program a nature based kindergarten program for a child who's uh, you know just uh, cross 2 years otherwise i would say 3 years is a good time but if you're looking at you know the whole aspect of schooling and academics now our new education policy also says that a child should complete 6 years before going into grade 1 so i would say 6 years of kindergarten is you know um say probably 4 4 years 4 right. to 3 years of kindergarten is a good uh, time yeah superb and uh, i have another comment from uh, heli ekman simplicity is so important what is your advice for the daily rhythm Yeah, Helen is our mentor. She is here. We should be privileged to have her here. Yes. Superb, Helen. Please, uh, Helen, uh, please do comment anything that you could share insights. It would be wonderful to do, have that. Yes. So I have learned so much about daily rhythm from her, and then you know I I am going to share about that as well. Superb. So the next uh, topic that we are going to talk about is uh, nutrition. Yeah. Um, which is you know uh, our meals, our snacks, and everything to do with uh, eating. So, firstly, uh, we advise that you know ch- uh, children eat as a family. We eat local food, seasonal food, freshly cooked food, compared to that you know what comes in packaged, mm-hmm. and which says that it is fresh, wholesome. Don't go by these labels, but what you cook at home. and if for example in our south india you know our idli dosa um um akki roti ragi these are the things that should be a uh, staple food at home not corn flakes or bread or an english breakfast so these are the things which also have a lot of texture in them different kinds of taste in them and very mild and gentle on the stomach that is more relevant for our gut to you know uh, uh, digest so um include uh, local varieties of grains and uh, you know uh, that is what you introduce to your children um and seasonal uh, seasonal is a very big thing we get watermelon right through the year but eat wa- it watermelons during summer mangoes yeah. during summer and you know uh, winter food winter foods are very different and it is very very re- uh, evident in a, in a place like india uh-huh. of course when you go abroad you get everything all around the year in india also that trend is growing these days yeah so so i think yeah absolutely because uh, nutrition is something we all are aware and the parents are usually kind of in a 
a place of stress when the child doesn't eat and they try to probably uh, ask the child what they want to eat and uh, it's like a rabbit hole after that right and then uh, uh, the child will not eat that even if you can't can provide that it's it's a difficult uh, situation every day they're going to be asking and throwing tantrums in fact for young children the best way is the parent already decides what is yes. the menu for the house right uh, don't give them too much option okay if it's that one off when you're traveling out you're going somewhere but uh, as a whole the parent you're calling the shots especially for young children you know below 10 years i would say that control the direction of the four you know you're like really the director of the movie and uh, you're you're calling the shots and uh, doing that and uh, before we continue again i'd like to thank the viewers who are watching in live and those who may watch recorded i hope you uh, can ask your questions uh, and we would be happy to take this up right now uh, especially if you have children and um, just for us to know before we move on to our second thing and third thing how many of you are facing challenges with nutrition you know type type your uh, type yes in the chat box so we know that okay these are the uh, parents who are or if your child is probably always uh, with media and not moving much the way you would like it and type digital media you know type uh, digital media or type nutrition so we know how many of you are having these challenges so we can also probably uh, guide you and uh, uh, tell more about it or talk more about it and uh, before we continue i just like to thank divya divya is uh, uh, the founder of tulsi world of kindergarten and she's been uh, uh, a, a, a parent she's a uh, the teacher uh, for young kids and she's been involved in this uh, space for a long time and uh, it's uh, i'm really happy to have you and uh, just to reintroduce myself i'm captain pritam maduka for those who may have joined in late uh, i'm a elite performance coach for visionary leaders and also a parenting coach focusing on uh, 5 to 15 year old parents uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, helping them really make sense of this parenting journey uh, giving them that clarity thank you so much uh, Sangeeta says yes, superb. And uh, continuing, Divya, uh, let's go to the third rule. I'm sure everybody is excited to know that. Yes. I just complete a few more things about nutrition. nutrition. Um, see, we get a lot of these instant powders for babies these days. Yeah. Compared to what, you know, our ancestors made, you know, we, we would soak ragi and, you know, sprout them and make them in front of uh, children. And the whole family was involved in making these kind of foods compared to what is made in machine, you know, powdered and instant pancake mixes. You know, these are the things that modern parents are opting for. And really it is marketed as a healthy product, healthy drink, mix of nine millets into a healthy drink. Why do you want to give nine millets? Give one millet at a time, one grain at a time. That is a child can relish, understand the taste of rice separately, understand what is ragi, understand what is, you know, bajra. Let the child understand each flavor separately. It should not be given in a mixed form. So there is so much that everyone is talking about nutrition. Yet there is a, a, a completely um, opposite philosophy which says, which is talking about, you know, raw vegan and... Uh, um, uh, soaked oats, overnight oats, and that should be your, uh, you know, uh, breakfast. It is completely, you know, um, contradicting what uh, what is eating local mean um, mean for us. So uh, please uh, look into your own local diets and bring bring those kind of uh, food into your uh, lifestyle rather than going with what is fancier and what is modern. So that is about the nutrition. Of course, we can talk a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, and we include these kind of mealtime rituals in our kindergartens, world of kindergartens. We have an elaborate fruit time where we relish mangoes in mango season, watermelons. We relish grapes in, when the grapes come. Similarly, we also have uh, food uh, um, uh, routines where we eat 
local variety of rice sambar and uh, you know palya in karnataka uh, a curd rice which is relevant to our culture similarly when you go to tamil nadu or maharashtra their staple food will be totally different from what we eat in karnataka so we bring a lot of local food and local culture into the world of kindergarten which is something i wanted to you know tell everyone uh, who's watching us in fact i have a, a small thing that i tell the parents when they come to me on uh, nutrition now if you forget what to eat and all that just look back to your grandparents yes your grandmother grandfather uh, what they ate just eat that okay common sense and uh, also about not to over complicate things just ask a question did they eat the junk food if not don't eat it right yeah obviously today we are living in a different space we would like to enjoy those kind of things but keep it to less if i have to give you a number let it be less than 20% of your time for a week probably the weekend but 5 days a week you should be eating what yes. your grandparents ate and uh, for children especially right Thank even you. for oneself even as adults we need to do that to stay healthy but uh, uh, for children especially in their growing years it's even more important i have before we go on to the other golden rules the remaining the three have, there are two three questions which we will take up uh, in fact there are more uh, this is from uh, hele which i actually missed uh, what is your advice for the daily rhythm yeah we are going to talk about the rhythm the Achha, next uh, uh, topic is rhythm of the day then uh, we will be which is uh, digital media anjali says uh, digital media yes and very, very less moment okay it's like that is the issue of today where uh, people are struggling with this challenge digital media has uh, uh, is become so accessible it's easy and sometimes we as parents also can get frustrated sometimes we are tired we, the child is probably you know, throwing a tantrum or some fit and we just want to just pass the phone or ask them to switch right. on the tv uh just so that it gives a break in fact uh, i have written a book called three culprits laziness fear and doubt i'm going to share a link it's available on amazon this is for mainly adults it's not for children because as parents if you are not going to take care of ourselves and not have a good daily rhythm we are going it's going to show in our children okay in fact uh, this book is everything about daily rhythm creating those winning habits and uh, having those thing i share a lot of strategies a lot of tactics and of course stories to inspire through my clients work and uh, the tactics of what to do every day right uh, so this is called three culprits laziness and fear and doubt i think every parent should read that uh, more of centering and finding a center and balance so that you can be a better parent for your child and uh, also hele is saying also being together cooking and sit down together the need of main dishes and small snack absolutely hele uh, i think you already made a wonderful comment cooking together it's so rare these days it's a beautiful time way of bonding you know yes. and uh, uh, sitting together for a meal even if one meal if families can sit together it can be a game changer and uh, the need for main dishes and small snack i think in india we are all used to having such uh, meals where you had some dal chawal roti sabji and you had something else on the side uh, very simple it used to be but wholesome i'm sure all the parents uh, if you are from the generations you know you have a child you probably know what we are talking okay so get back to the roots go back to the roots okay <laughs> so the next topic is the rhythm yeah. uh, so we have spoken about movement nutrition now we are talking about the rhythm mm -hmm. so rhythm is nothing but structuring your day structuring your child's day having a routine which is repetitive in nature so when a set of uh, familiar actions uh, are repeating then the uh, then the child is comprehending what is going around uh, in his environment rather than putting it in a very uh, you know theoretically or intellectual way so uh, um, allow uh, they do not perceive the world intellectually children 
you know so it it does not help to explain things and say that today we are going to do this or that but whereas when you repeat a set of actions and routines then they start understanding that after meal time is my play time or oh, now i wake up and you know i have my milk or i have my uh, fruits so that is a, that, that becomes like a base for habit formation which remains all through their life so give them a rich routine um, and this uh, structure of the day Mm, has to be um, uh, in in a, you know planned in a way that a child is sitting for about you know 10 to 15 minutes that is his attention span you know a meal time or a, or a, a probably say activity coloring or painting that you do with a child 10 minutes hardly a child can play or can you know a, a, ch- a child who is 18 months 2 years to up until 3 years they can hardly sit for about 15 minutes and do a coloring or a worksheet or a you know any kind of engagement when you even give them household chores like putting your dishes away or putting your laundry away they can do it there that is also play for them so they will do it for 10 15 minutes and then they need this free free time free play so we structure our day in the kindergarten in a way that it is you know 10 minutes they sit 10 to 15 minutes we do circle time story time uh, or it is uh, a meal time so these are all short times but they have longer breathing out time which is outdoor free play or indoor free play so we structure and and i would say that you also try to as a parent try to structure your uh, home routine in such a way that a child can be engaged for some time engaging also is very important too much of free play also it it overwhelms them they don't know they don't they don't get any sense of direction and uh, you know they need that a little bit of bonding with you uh, sitting with you reading a story book and then they again go back to their play Mm-hmm. so you know coming together and letting them go coming together and letting them go is a very important uh, way to structure your day yeah. even for adults i think that is a very uh, that's an appropriate way of when you when you're at work mm-hmm. when you uh, sit down for a long time you want to feel like you know getting up and stretching and moving so for children it is even more uh, you know um, uh, bigger for them so um in the uh, mainstream kindergartens what happens is a child is meant to be sitting and listening to the teacher or looking at the uh, blackboard for about 40 you know 40 45 minutes or you know even say 1 hour and then if a child is not sitting then you label the child as adhd or you know um, a very uh, hyperactive child or the child you know you start labeling the child with different terms these days but what you know in a in world of scenario it's not like that so it is a child is not meant to sit for for a longer time so don't even look at uh, creative ways to make, ch- engage your child for more than you know 20 minutes so that is about the rhythm of the day so about- and uh, another thing that i would want to say is feeling secure a child feels a lot of secure uh, security and feels safe when there is a rhythm of the day when there is a routine so that is very important for a you know a long term um, uh, habit formation or feeling secure or feel trusting another person yeah absolutely absolutely in fact uh, just to add to what you have shared i mean amazing points was like uh, as parents uh, we have to take the onus of setting the discipline in the yes. child's life in our daily routine we can't allow the child the the uh, i'm talking young children okay under 7 8 10, 10 years and maybe for older ones you can give them a little bit of luxury of tweaking some things but a good discipline lays the foundation for them on how they become as an individual in their 20s okay most of my work was with young adult space in my initial years and then teen years and then i started realizing that if we could sort this problem out in the middle years right the the, the as the world of say between 7 14 7 to 14 or i would say between say 5 to 15 in some ways you would have a much better they would still go through some issues life is like that ups and downs but they will be able to manage them much more better much more smoothly more confidently as human and not have these challenges which i generally encounter when they come as young adults so that is the most important thing because parenting 
you can't see it's a long gestation project right it's not going to tell you anything today if you do bad thing nothing is going to happen today the right. price is paid forward right if you do good things you don't know about it price is paid forward right so become mindful that's why I get insights uh get to know people i'm going to be also sharing uh, a link for you to connect with us and um, let me share that okay uh, and we would be happy to connect with you one on one you know of course it will not be immediate but definitely uh, my team and divya's team will connect with you and uh, we can reach out and see how we could you know give probably you know take a session and just guide you a little bit here here and there so it's the dialogue circle i've shared the form it should be available wherever you're watching please do click and uh, fill up that form and and maybe when we get time we will definitely you know reach out to you and see how we could help and uh, uh, before we continue if you have questions okay uh, please post your burning question that uh, if that was something that could somebody could guide you you know validate or probably course correct now is the time you are having us live this is the opportunity to ask ask your burning question related to a child you could be a teacher you could be a parent drop in is it like a boy or a girl what is the age and what's your burning question okay so we'd be happy to take that up so uh, continuing um, uh, divya uh, yes. yeah what yeah. What are the other I would like to add a little bit more on the rhythm of the day. Yeah. Uh, there is also rhythm of the week and mm. rhythm of the month, rhythm of the year. So then we classify the rhythm into, you know, rep uh, rip, uh, rip, uh, situations or scenarios repeating weekly, monthly, yearly. So yearly rhythms can be, you know, in forms of seasons, festivals, which we also bring into the kindergarten which naturally happens in our you know home routines also we have, we celebrate festivals uh, we bring uh, seasonal um, uh, you know um, things into our house like when it is raining you there's ambiance in your house is different the meals are very different and things that you do in the rain is very different from what you do in winter and summer so these are the things that a child also must be exposed to in a very very subtle way and then it becomes like a habit formation for you know children when they grow up yeah. uh, these were simple things which already exist in the indian culture we have a lot of festivals and all the festivals are based on the sun's pattern or you know the seasons or the farming that is happening so uh, these are the things that we also bring into our kindergarten as a part of curriculum in forms of songs in form in forms of food in forms of colors and uh, stories you know uh, so different things that we bring into kindergarten but keeping the base as a, a rhythm of the you know month or rhythm of the week um, and and rhythm of the days of course uh, there uh, so the next uh, uh, you know important rule or important key of golden parenting is sleep sleep is also very much connected uh, to the rhythm of the day so when you schedule your day you're also looking at the sleep of the child when the child is going to bed uh, so uh, steiner says you know we wake up with the sun and then we you know when the sun is setting that's when our day also ends which is not happening very evidently in today's life we have lights and we have brighter lights and there is music and there's television this cooking and this work that is happening more active the environment becomes more active after 7 pm whereas it has to start shutting down we have to start closing the day by you know 6 6:30 7 7:30 7 probably 8 o'clock so then a child also understands that this is the end of the day when we make it very active then the child also gets very active he becomes more awake more hyper and then he doesn't go to bed by you know even by 11 12 90% of the parents that come into the kindergarten or even otherwise have this issue that my children don't sleep on time they you know they sleep with us at 11 12 1 and we have to really you know um, rock them to sleep or you know they don't feel sleepy hmm. so structuring the day again is very connect uh, you know relevant how you structure the uh, child's day has he played enough has he had a good meal 
that leads to a good sleep yeah. so sleeping we advise all the parents that you have an early dinner say 7 o'clock and then by 7 30 8 o'clock the child is in bed so he wakes up early by you know 6 6 30 he gets enough time to play around to do his you know whatever he wants to do at home around 6 30 to 7 30 then you start preparing the child for you know a bath and breakfast and then so he he can go to school by you know 8 39 ish whereas nowadays we wake up the child we have to literally push the child from the bed wake him up at 8 30 and by nine o'clock everything must be done eating sleep you know eating a bath and getting ready it is such a mad rush which is also building up as an anxiety issue in children these days yeah absolutely i think um... Uh, you covered those points. Sleep is number one. In the, as a will strength coach, what I call uh, myself, I, I say that your sleep will reflect in your your day or the effort. You know. Yes. And uh, I've shared actually some insights in my book, Three Culprits, on setting your sleep habit uh, well. And I also conduct these boot camps to help people uh, build winning days and winning routines. And because I've realized that people's sleep is very important and their how they manage their day is super important. Yes. And my my thing go to has been the same when parents come to me for advice. I say, unless you're ready to work on yourself, ready to work on your day, work on your uh, the the way you are working on. Let's not work on the child. Right? right because i know they come when they are older to me they're 14 year old 15 year old i say if you're ready to work on yourself then i'm your guy i will help you there right i will get you to that point and uh, we'll work on the children but uh, uh, that is the first thing to become mindful of ourselves you know we are not perfect we constantly falter and we all do those things but to become mindful and then get up and get going right and uh, sleep is number one like you mentioned that everything in our universe is on a rhythm right the galaxies are on a rhythm the solar system is on a rhythm the planets are on a rhythm we ourselves naturally are in rhythm and uh, one of the hacks let me give you a hack for your sleep <clears throat> the lights okay the white lights are known to stir the wakefulness you know the hormones which keep us awake so switch on to warm yellow lights <clears throat> switch on to warm yellow lights and early in the evening itself. The white lights are a daytime lights. The yellow lights are the evening lights. I know people sometimes tell me, but it, it looks so boring. It looks so dull and the house feels like, oh my God, it looks like we have come to a village. But the most important thing is to prepare for the night. That is how it should be. The night should dull you, should sober you down. Uh, I can, uh, yes occasional party you want to have a weekend party go ahead but i'm telling most of the days you should sober down you should be able to uh, go into that phase we don't have something called a sleep routine today we don't have we don't have any process for that right that's what divya is probably also telling us you know get that process out every day sleeping 10 11 that means there is no process what is your process is the question you need to ask write it down this is the process okay if you're going to sleep at 10 o'clock all of you all as parents and child then what should happen work in reverse and your answers will come to you okay. yes superb i think we have two more golden rules uh, one more i think oh, one more this is the yes. fourth yes this is the fourth one let's cover up before you share let's 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 wait for a thing let's see if there are some questions yes and, uh, the first golden rule was about uh, movement okay and uh, how movement is so important and uh, uh, to work with children especially young children though absolutely important but even as they grow older we need to keep that moment alive we need to do that and uh, that's something we need to become mindful about are children having enough movement is the question you need to ask okay and what you need to do about it the second thing was um, uh, let me read uh, uh, nutrition. Nutrition. Nutrition and uh, and the meal times, keeping that kind of you know the food, keeping it local, keeping it what your parents ate, what your grandparents ate, 
and keeping that kind of quality because sometimes they're confused there are so many researches coming up so many uh, information which comes up and confuses us so go back to the roots eat what your grandparents ate right feed your child what your grandparents ate for most days again don't have to make it hardcore but most days and the third our mentor, thing, Rosie, our mentor dr lakshmi says yeah uh, if your grandmother approves it then eat it yeah absolutely it's the same thing you know that's what commonsensically one should do right yes. that it's there they say time is the greatest indicator of a successful model okay if time has passed that test automatically it is it beats all modern research right and uh, go with that kind of thing third the fourth one the third one was rhythm we spoke about daily rhythm and how important it is for you and uh, the fifth one was about sleep you know sleep fourth is one sleep sorry fourth one was sleep and we have one more to go and before we go there i'm i'm going to share some links so you can stay connected with us and there is also a question okay i think it's from a user from kids have to catch school bus by 7:30 am i feel schools should start at 9:30 am for younger grades instead of 8:30 am yeah absolutely uh, but this is something that we cannot comment or control it's it's the school and probably something you can take up with the school and it also depends on region to region maybe you're in a urban city where it's really jam packed and uh, reasons you have to take we have to also understand that we have to live in a modern world right we have to live in a modern world parents are sometimes working at night uh, children uh, have the normal school hours these are the complexities right and in the complexities how to make sense of what we do how to make sense of our parenting is what uh, we should become mindful what can we do with the best we can right and i'm going to share some links and i've already shared and um, one sec yeah so i've already shared some links with you all do connect do stay tuned in wherever you're watching this uh, do follow so you can get more such insights divya's uh, uh, facebook uh, handle my little bookshop she shares some amazing insights into toys and other uh, early childhood uh, uh, insights do follow that and i do share from an elite performance especially as an adult and uh, also as for parents okay and uh, how uh, if you are a parent of a 5 to 15 year old and beyond even young adults uh, uh, how and what you can do to improve your own quality of life and improve your parenting journey as such and if you have questions please do post we are in the last 10 minutes and uh, before we wind up and if you have any questions post uh, what is your burning question as a parent what is your uh, child's age is it a boy or a girl and your burning question and uh, thank you so much for watching all this on live we have 10 more minutes to go and uh, you the recording will also be on the same space you can watch it again but now is the time to ask the live questions and make the best and uh, uh, of the time here so divya now for the last one and and i have another one or two follow up questions after that so what is the fifth golden rule so uh, when i was uh, uh, when i started uh, um, my career in world of um, i was not married so i was only 24 years old and uh, uh, you know a lot of things was very practical in the kindergarten we were learning from our you know uh, mentors and i could practically apply it and see the changes in children mm-hmm. but when i became a parent myself i felt that nothing makes sense you know how do, how do we bring this into you know making sense and practical uh, um, you know how can we make this really practical not just reading and applying it in the classroom mm-hmm. so uh, uh, so slow down mama was about that pritam where you know i have experienced world of and how to bring world of into home and it definitely has to do a lot with us and not with the child that is very sure that is very very clear it is nothing to do with the child it is to do with us as you become a parent you are stepping into becoming a better human being and not just parenting a child it is all about yourself your routines your health your you know a lifestyle how you're eating and what choices you make in life so that a child just automatically imitates there is nothing that you can teach a child or there is no big or a right school that can train your child 
so it is you and just being yourself and making the right choices how you bec- become a better human being is what a child learns from you so when i asked my mentor the question about you know making the choices in life and you know i struggle with me time and you know uh, my work my career and you know all these things my relationships she said that keep your child in the center you have become a parent for a reason it is your choice that you brought this child on the earth so keep the child in center and work your life around the child so when we talk about you know a uh, struggling with playing or you know school time so you plan your routines in such a way that a child has to be in center we do not compromise with the child's nutrition child sleep child's movement or play so the fifth point is all about that giving love warmth and care for your child just by being there fully present for the child are you available for your child because love is not something that you can just take a child to a mall and give him your uh, uh, time you know quality time in a mall or in a restaurant or in a you know uh, a holiday yeah. it is something that has to happen on daily basis me uh, you have to bond with the child the love the warmth the touch the care for the child has to happen on daily basis and where can you meet the child fully present not just you know uh, being on calls but looking at your child and just you know pretending to be there present but am i eating with the child am i making that when i am putting the child to sleep am i not I, sh- i shouldn't be thinking about what is on the gas tower or what is on my email but am i fully present for the child can i touch the child with a lot you know with that kind of warmth you know that is more important so all these things combine together and nothing we cannot look at rhythm as rhythm or sleep as sleep or we can't look at movement as movement everything needs to you know is intertwined and interrelated mm-hmm. so everything has to be put together and one cannot be less or more and this is about uh, the love and warmth that uh, you create a safe and secure uh, home environment for the child where you're mm-hmm. able to not be busy 24 hours but you are able to give that time and bonding for the child which is very very essential especially in today's lifestyle where we are opting for you know working in the night and you know sleeping during the day uh, can we look at change in our job roles or can we little bit you know amend my uh, calls in such a way that i am able to sit with my child for the meal time and not just switch on the tv and give him a bowl of you know rice or dal or khichdi and the child eats looking at the television you know uh, so this is about love and uh, uh, warmth because everybody knows about love and warmth and we can buy a lot of things but can we really give ourselves to the child can we really touch the child with a lot of you know being present there for the child is my fifth topic okay wonderful beautifully put uh, again just to add a little further of course the kind of time and attention you would give the child would vary across their growing years what a child would need in the early years uh, from a warmth would be so much of cuddling so much of hugging and uh, other things not that the older children don't need it but this is really the core of the heart and uh, really to hold the child and give them that confidence they grow up into very confident human beings similarly the the kind of love and warmth you would give you know in in really listening to them fully when they are in their the uh, schooling years and uh, giving them that that would be a really love and warmth you know you're really listening and not interrupting uh, and being there that's a different it builds a lot of courage i say you know yes. because what is courage is the ability to express if we didn't have courage we will not even speak with another human being that's what it is right to courage to do to go and do some action take some steps so it it really builds in your schooling years unfortunately our schools are not uh conventional schools are not curated for that kind of model but we as parents they are still with us for those 12 15 hours with us then how can we be there with love just to listen to them and again at an older age just to be there with them while they you know making those decisions just to be supportive is another kind of love and warmth of course the hugs 
are valid all the way give your child a lot of hugs a lot of warmth that 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 really reassures them and uh, makes them into a really rock solid human being who are ready to take on this world so i hope you had an amazing breakthrough insights and mindfulness and uh, before we close i have another question or two do stay tuned and do post your questions leave a like if you like this video leave a comment if you like it do share it with your friends especially if they are parents and you think it will help do share this along and i'm sure maybe it will give them that little bit of an answer they were looking for and you would be helping them a lot so uh, do this and uh, it will also help us in our mission as we help parents along and uh, bring this uh, joy of parenting to them right and divya before we close any uh, interesting episode that happens uh, in your kindergarten that happened recently or something <laughs> yeah there are plenty of them uh uh you know uh, when children have their free play time they just imitate what the parents do at home it is mm -hmm. literally like you know uh, a a form of digestion when you give them food they digest it and make it their own energy so mm -hmm. free play is like a digestion of whatever they've seen in their environment they're just you know copying their parents and coming here and expressing through play mm -hmm. so either the child is cooking or is on the telephone or you know working on the laptop and after covid we see that play has changed a lot you mm -hmm. know it is more to do with driving and being on the phone cooking and being on the phone <laughs> so they are having a wooden padlock <laughs> in their ear and they are cooking and they driving also you know <laughs> holding this block uh, in their ear all the time so we don't judge and say that this is right or wrong but this is the way a child is digesting is what what he's seen in his environment and let that be we cannot say that this is wrong or that is right because a child is learning through all its senses mm -hmm. and we cannot and the child cannot understand what is right or wrong so i would say that keep your environment mm. in such a way that he absorbs only good things yeah. there is no room for bad things yeah. and when he has picked up something bad and you know he is expressing in his behavior or or in his play or through drawings or through the musical way then we don't judge the child we try to understand where is it coming from mm. Yeah. I hope this all this you know gave a good insight for all the parents. Yeah, I hope I it hope. did. And I'm sure the parents may still have some questions, still have something. I'm yes. going to leave this form for you all. Do connect with us. Okay, it's a Google form. Fill up your burning question, some challenge you have. Maybe you are not comfortable to share on this platform, but you probably want to connect with us. Then do uh, share on this. We will be happy to connect with you. Uh, it's called the Dialogue Circle Connect. And uh, leave your question there. And also, like I said, do share this with uh, with a friend, with a parent who you think it could help. Probably it will give them that just that one insight that they were looking for, something that connected, and they probably will give them that light bulb moment to solve something for them. It will be helping them a lot. You'll be helping us in our mission. Give a like to this video and uh, do stay connected. Follow me on the YouTube channel. Follow uh, Divya on the facebook uh, my little bookshop and uh, it will be wonderful the, the website link also you could post uh, pritam it's my little bookshop dot in one sec let me see if i have that www dot my little bookshop dot in okay, that is the that. website where you can find my curated story books and open ended toys which are made out of uh, natural materials like wood cloth we don't use any plastic materials in waldorf Okay. And uh, I would uh, definitely like to thank Hele for being uh, dot in uh, Pritam. Oh, sorry. Yeah, not no problem. Okay. Yeah. So Hele has made time to be here. She is logging in from Denmark, so and uh, this is her book. Uh, it's called the you know the five golden keys which she has written. It's available on my uh, website. It's not available in India otherwise. So when Hele comes to India for her retreat. she gives me you know certain dvds and uh, books uh, which is otherwise very difficult to find in india so please utilize that so next time she comes to india she will bring more books um, and uh, she has really simplified uh, world of for many of us she travels all over the globe you know mentoring uh, caregivers teachers parents 
and she really simplifies it practically how can you bring it into life and that is what my aim has to, you know has been for the past uh, say 5 6 years that of course we have studied a lot of this anthroposophy and philosophy but how do we practically address it and bring it to the child to the parent so they can make the best use out of it Absolutely. thank you pritam for having me here it has really been a wonderful uh, you know uh, session and i really hope that many parents across you know the country uh, benefit from this uh, talk absolutely absolutely divya and uh, thank you so much for your time i have learned a lot as well and all your stories and uh, as we continue to do this uh, please do follow us and uh, stay connected wishing you a wonderful day thank you for taking your time out wishing you a wonderful night um, yeah bye bye thank you everyone for logging in good night